Alcohol is quite the norm in our society, parties, celebrations, weekends, and for many, most evenings. But with alcohol linked to so many illnesses and diseases, it's worth looking at how we can reduce our drinking or even stop drinking. Specifically today, we're gonna to look at how to cope with sober shamers when you choose not to drink. In this series, we're exploring health and wellness under the premise that some illnesses and diseases may be avoidable. Each week, I interview wellness experts and dive deep into an aspect of health and wellness with the aim of giving you greater understanding so that you're free to make the best choices about your health based on your own individual uniqueness. If you want to explore your health and wellness, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of all of our latest uploads. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please also share it with them too. This week, we're diving deep into how to cope with sober shamers when you choose not to drink. And we're going to do this with wellness broadcaster and best-selling author, Janie Lee Grace. So alcohol is uh, quite the norm in our society, parties, celebrations, weekends, many evenings as well. Um, there, there's offers also, you know, the supermarkets always have deals, but alcohol is also linked to many illnesses and diseases. Janie, tell us what uh, illnesses and diseases alcohol is um, really connected to. Well, <laughs> where do I start? It's linked to over 200 illnesses. Mm -hmm including at least seven types of cancer. Um, and really, it's not a case of let's sort of identify each individual illness. It's really more a case of realizing that alcohol is unbelievably bad for us, despite our thinking, <laughs> you know, despite all the news stories that continually pop up. I saw one just recently, again, saying that alcohol is good for us in moderation. Um, I'm afraid that's total BS. It is absolutely not. Um, it is bad for just about everything. And when you, if you kind of spin this on its head, you find that when you stop drinking, everything improves. So there isn't anything that isn't improved by not drinking. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that every illness is, is, is cured. Of course not. But whatever symptoms, whatever, whatever you have going on will be improved to a, le a lesser or greater extent by not drinking. And of course, that's not just physical illness. It's really important to stress that uh, mental illness and anxiety and depression is intrinsically linked with alcohol. And yet it's hardly ever talked about. So true. I mean, I know from people I've, I've spoken to, I was quite surprised um, to hear that from, from these people that they were, were actually drinking as much as they, they actually um, were. And when they uh, when they stopped drinking, how their life changed um, is quite kind of stark. So today we're going to talk about how to cope with um, sober shamers and when you choose not to drink. Before we get into that, let, let's just talk about some of the benefits of, of actually being sober. So what are the benefits? Oh, wow. I mean, again, it's how long have you got? The benefits are absolutely unbelievable. And I think most people realise that there will be some benefits. This is why people do, do things like dry January and dry July and October. They do, people want to do a month because they know that they will have a few benefits like clearer skin and they, they'll sleep better and they'll uh, perhaps drop a few pounds in weight if that's something they want to do. Um, so people kind of are aware of these relatively obvious things. Now, interestingly, in the first 30 days, you don't necessarily experience many great great benefits you'll get some benefit but really the the benefits come a bit later on and then they're long lasting so um the, the benefits are all of those things <laughs> Def, definitely better sleep but not in the first few weeks at all in fact it can be worse if anything um absolutely an amazing um clarity a, a totally different way of feeling focused it's quite difficult to explain but a, a completely different clarity um, clearer skin, nice shiny eyes, sober hair, who knew? <laughs> that sometimes makes people laugh, but it's really true. My eyesight has improved. What a weird thing. Um, just amazing. Um, and then, of course, there's everything else like uh, your, the anxiety 
uh, lessens or goes away completely. Mm. You look younger, you feel younger. Uh, you know, I love that. I love that, that one. All the years that I was sort of panicking about getting older and looking into all the anti-aging stuff and, oh my goodness, I'm completely holistic. I can't consider surgery and all of that stuff um and 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 now whether it's just that i no longer care <laughs> i don't know but it certainly changes your perspective on just about everything what you have to remember is that alcohol is a toxin and it's a depressant mm. so it is literally damaging your, your your body damaging you physically um causing inflammation it's really really bad for the gut so so physically it's it's not helping anything and obviously mentally um it's a depressant and so we're up and down there's a roller coaster most of us are not used to dealing with our emotions so um over time i mean the benefits literally go on and on and on and on and the really great thing about about the benefits are that after you would think that maybe after you've done six months or a year you might think well i've kind of I've had all the benefits then. I've kind of, I've, I'm reg I've regulated my weight. I sleep well now. I'm, you know, I, my, my skin's clear. I'm, I'm okay now. So there's a kind of plateau. That's sort of it really. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's nothing more to look forward to. Actually, the reverse is true. It, the, the benefits keep on coming. There's this phrase that people use, you know, sobriety is the gift that keeps on giving. It's such a naff phrase. I hate it. And, but, but it's true. So my challenge is if anyone can think of a better way of saying exactly that, I've got a prize for them. No idea what it is, but I'll think of something great. Because uh, it's completely true. It's just so naff. Yeah. But it actually keeps on giving. I'm two and a half years and there's always something new, always something else that I think, oh my goodness, that's another benefit that I, could, I would never have had that going on. People change their lives. People um, have a whole new focus and become creative, change relationships, change their work, their business. I mean, for anyone in business, for anyone who has a, their own um, business that they run or their own brand uh, there's nothing like sobriety to 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 have you rocking it yeah it brings real clarity so I think I heard the answer to this question in what you were just saying but I want to ask just to be sure have you always been a non-drinker oh god no no of course not no I used to drink um, you know ridiculous quantities of, of, of booze and 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 it wasn't really so much a rock bottom moment for me I never had a rock bottom moment you know you wouldn't have ever found me in a in a skip or, or even taking a day off work um, mm. I was what we call a gray area drinker the okay. term is gray area drinkers because we tend to think that it's all very black and white that there are the those who um, uh, uh, are, are totally at rock bottom and clinically dependent and, and, and need medical intervention. And then there's absolutely everybody else who are, you know, perfectly fine, just happy social drinkers. But actually the reality is very, very different. It's a, there are many different shades of gray in between um, of, of, of people drinking. And actually, if you want to get serious about it, we know that there are no safe levels of alcohol, actually. <laughs> so um, most people are somewhere on the spectrum. They're, they're, they either drink moderately, or that's how they see it, or they know they drink too much, but they carry on drinking. And for me, I was in that kind of that shade of grey. Um, I was drinking pretty much every day. And uh, over time, it was, a, it was a habit. I drank every day, not because I was clinically dependent, but because it was a habit. Uh, and, and it's a habit that traps you, you know, because, because uh, alcohol is addictive. And I was waking up at 3 a.m. pretty much every day uh, with this just realization dawning on me. What are you doing? What, this is so not authentic with who you are. You know, the kind of health and well-being work that you do. This is making you ill. This is making you... Uh, you know, not, you're not uh, able to be at your full capacity. Um, and this would happen literally every single day at 3 a.m., the voice of reason, if you like. But then by 6 p.m., I had the voice of the wine witch saying, go on, have a, have have a glass of Sauvignon. Yeah. yeah, that's it. really interesting. And was it um, for you, was it a, a, a big leap, as in going from drinking to suddenly not drinking, or was there a transition where you drank less? Um, yeah, I think people do this differently. Some people do decide to drink mindfully mm. and reduce their drinking. Um, and others know that they have to quit. So 
This is an interesting one because there are, we have the rise of the mindful drinker at the moment and the mindful drinking community and the word sober curious, which I'm sure you've heard. Yeah. And, and really my take on it is that if you are someone who doesn't have an issue with alcohol and you do have an off switch and you choose to drink mindfully, um, that's, uh, that's a really good route to choose because you can become conscious of setting your own rules and boundaries so that if something goes bad in your life, it's not going to completely trip you up mm. and then suddenly you're on that slippery slope. Um, so for someone who, uh, I don't know, can literally take it or leave it. So like, I'm, I have a coffee, a cup of coffee here and I have an off switch. So when I've had that coffee, I won't need to have another one. Yeah. Um, even if there was one there, I, I, I won't drink another one. I've got an off switch. I've had a coffee. That was lovely. Thank you. All Definitely. done. I won't need yeah. another one. I'm good. Um, but with alcohol, I didn't have an off switch. So if you know you have an off switch, yeah. you, you can then think, okay, I'm going to think about drinking mindfully and I'm going to reduce the amount of drink or I'm going to switch it with some alcohol free drinks and, and whatever. But the reality is if you have an off switch, you're probably not watching this because it's not a thing for you. Yeah. It's just not a thing for you. I don't need to watch an interview about drinking less coffee because it's not a thing for me. I can drink less coffee. I've got, I've got an off switch. It's just not, not in my life. If you're watching this because a little voice inside you is saying, I know that this isn't right, then the chances are you don't have an off switch. And in that <laughs> instance, it's absolutely pointless reducing drinking. You need to stop drinking. And I always say to people, even if you're not sure at this point and you think you want to drink moderately, do 30 days. Do a minimum of 30 days where you drink nothing at all, no alcohol at all. And then you can give your, yourself a chance to have a bit of a reset. All the alcohol has gone from your body. Hopefully a lot of the cravings will have gone and you can reassess at that point. Um, mm. Actually, 30 days isn't really long enough. You need you need you know, 60, 90, but, but it's a start. 30 days is a yeah. good start. So if you challenge yourself to those 30 days before you make any decisions about whether you're going to drink less. So we're talking about how to um, cope with the uh, sober shamers when, when you choose not to drink. So let's, let's, let's get into that now. Um, now we've explored the topic a bit because I know my, my, my wife, she's a non-drinker has been since the day we've met. Um, but when we're going out to parties and, you know, we're meeting people, there's always somebody who's always going, go on, have a drink. Yeah. How, for, for other people, how would you, um, how, how would you recommend to them? What would you recommend as, as being the best way to, to deal with that? Yeah, well, I think this is a really important topic because when people first ditch the booze, this can be the thing that worries them the most because they, they've made their decision. They might even be feeling really good about their decision and it's going well, but then they've got a party coming up at the weekend or whatever, and they feel really, really stressed. And this can often be the time mm -hmm. when people give up all their good intentions. They give up because they arrive at the party and they haven't prepared what they're going to say or do. So then somebody hands them their usual drink and they start to say, Oh, well, actually I, I'm, I'm kind of not really drinking. I'm not, I'm kind of at the moment. I'm not really. And before you know it, they go, don't be ridiculous. Just have one. It's it's the yeah. just have one and then you're off onto a spiral. So the really important thing here is to remember a few key things. Number one, you're doing this for you. And this will be the most important and best thing you have ever done for yourself, for your own health and well-being, the yeah. best thing you will ever do. So you're doing this for you. It's not about them. You're doing it for you. It's non-negotiable. But how do you deal with the interaction? And the answer is you prep. You prep ahead of time. So ahead of time, you decide exactly what you're going to say or not say. And there's a whole variety of things you can do. If you choose, you can fib. You can say, I'm on medication. I'm pregnant. But clearly, that doesn't work for everyone. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm driving home. And by the way, you may be driving home. That's one of the amazing benefits of sobriety. You, you can drive home. Um, there's, a, there's a million different fibs you can tell if you want to tell a fib. Or you can tell the truth. You can say, I'm choosing not to drink. It, my, it's better for my mental health. Mm -hmm. Or 
I'm doing, you know, whatever it is, you prep it in advance. Really, really clear. Write it down. Write down exactly what you are going to say. And if you're going to be with a bunch of people who you know well, or they're your friends or your family, I'd recommend giving them a heads up. So I'd send them a text or a message. And I say, just to let you know, when we meet up, I'm not drinking alcohol. So there's more for you. You know, you can make a joke of it. Or you can say, I'm ditching the booze uh, and I would really appreciate your support uh, on this. Now, if they're your real friends, they'll support you. If they're not, then there's going to come a time where they might, might have to be decluttered from your life. But the key thing here is you are totally authentic, straight up about your decision and your choice. Now, if you switch it for a moment in your head and you imagine that you had decided to become vegan and you were going to someone's house, um, you, could, you might be going for a barbecue, okay? And what you would do if you were vegan is you would let them know that you're vegan. You might offer to take your own um, uh, you know, veggie stuff to, put, to, to barbecue. You might take sweet corn or whatever you would take, or you might ask them if they would provide it for you. But either way around, you'll still go to that social occasion and they'll be eating what they're eating and you'll be eating what you're eating. And if they're your real friends, it'll still be fabulous. What you wouldn't do is rock up as a vegan and have someone say to you, well, it's just a burger. Just have one burger. I mean, it wouldn't be a thing, would it? You would just say, I won't be doing that. As, as you're talking about this, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I, have, I have a dairy allergy. So for me, when I go out and eat to a friend's house, it's a, it's a non-negotiable. I have exactly. to say. Have to exactly. Say. And people who are you know, gluten intolerant have to do yeah, exactly, exactly the same thing. Yeah, all so, of these dietary things are so known in our society now. And hopefully it won't be long before we don't even need to have this conversation because yeah. it will be just as normal to choose yeah. not to drink as to drink, exactly yeah. as it is with being vegan or dairy free. Yeah, so I think what I'm, I'm thinking from what you're saying is it's, it's actually in our own minds is making it a non-negotiable. If, totally. if we choose not to drink, totally. we choose not to drink, and we communicate that and we're okay with that we're clear with that yeah you know, really love and you've given people there some some really good things to be able to say if they want to kind of use an excuse but for me it's like i would be really clear i think that like my dairy allergy it's got to be this you know yeah so exactly i mean there's a funny thing with alcohol of course because you're shining a light on other people's behavior yeah so often these sober shamers yeah. actually um they're really thinking about themselves. It's really a case of, oh, you're not drinking, you know, but you're my drinking buddy. What do you mean you're not drinking? Yeah. Come on, you're, you're no fun anymore. I mean, those kind of, uh, kinds of, um, th you have to face that. Mm. You just have to go, okay, it, 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 this is, that's their stuff. We don't need to get into negotiation or argument. I highly recommend that you don't have debates in the first 30 days with, with, with anyone uh, other than, you know, those that yeah, everyone needs a supporter. You need connection. That's why, I, you know, I run the sober club and it's, and it's all about having like-minded people who are behind you and supporting you yeah. but with your family, your friends, even sometimes your partner, I would highly recommend doing this first bit alone. Do it for mm -hmm. you. Don't have a conversation with them. Don't try and rationalize it because you're too fragile in your own, um, sobriety to be able to cope with lots of argument and discussion and debate just to start with just say to your partner your family your friends um, if they're if they're challenging you if they want to talk about it just say you know uh, give me a bit of time and we'll have a good conversation about it but right now I just please would you just support me let me I'm just doing this thing for me but actually I don't really want to share all the ins and outs of it right right now because emotionally there's no doubt you can feel really fragile to start with because mm -hmm. many people have had years, perhaps since they were teenagers, of numbing everything with alcohol. Yeah. So you mentioned the, uh, the Sober Club. Um, we'll pop a link um, into the description below the video. Tell us a little bit more about the Sober Club, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, I, I started the Sober Club because I recognize that uh, there's this lovely phrase, you know, the opposite of addiction is connection. And I recognize the importance of like-minded people, whether meeting in, per in person or virtually, having someone who has your back, you know, being mm -hmm. able to tell someone how you're feeling who really understands. And, um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to focus on health and well-being. So obviously my life's work has been around good nutrition and skincare without chemicals and, and, and all the stuff that I talk about, spirituality and mindset meditation. 
And when I finally found my missing link, <laughs> I, I realized, suddenly realized, hold on, actually most people get sober and then they start to realize, wow, I've been putting crap food in my body as well. And do I need to think about meditation? So this can be the time when people really start to become the whole of who they are and, and, and really blossom and grow. So in the sober club, we, we, we absolutely do the ditching the booze thing. There's a, an online course, get the buzz without the booze, but we have members in there who are day one and straight into the course. And we have members who are day uh, year six, literally they've been sober six years. And the reason is because we're looking at all different aspects of holistic living because there's always another layer, you know, someone yeah. might be a year sober and then they'll go, do you know what? I've had this thing, you know, that I know that I've needed to address and now's the time and I'm going to deal with that now. So it's, it's, it's a bit like the kind of Russian doll thing. You see all these different layers coming off. It's really amazing seeing how people yeah. transform. I really like that and, and, and want to acknowledge you for what you've done with the, the Sober Club and, and the people, the community you're creating there because it, it's helping people to evolve their lives in, in that kind of way. The other thing I liked about what you said there as well was the, the like-minded aspect, because I know that we can become a lot like the people we hang out with, mm. um, you know, and if you've got a community there where people want to make those transformations in their life, well, what a great place for people to go to, uh, to do that. Jenny, yeah. I, I like to ask, um, because, um, because I like to take the information that um, our experts are giving me and everyone listening, um, I'd like them to be able to take that information to something that's practical and useful. Um, so if we could take this down to one step, based on what we've talked about today, what would be a challenge that you could leave me and everyone else with that we could partake in to, uh, to make this practical for us? So I think the, the most important thing is to ask yourself, would my life be better physically and emotionally without alcohol? That's the question, not am I drinking too much, you know, or should I start after the next party? Just that one question, would my life be better physically and emotionally without alcohol? And if deep down in your gut and your intuition, you know that the answer is yes, then you owe it to yourself to give this a shot. So I would really recommend that you get yourself prepped and you immerse yourself in the stuff that's going to educate and inspire you. And it's really important that you do both. So you need to read something that really tells you what we were talking about at the beginning of this interview, it tells you what alcohol really is. So read a book like um, Alcohol Explained by William Porter or Drink by Professor Nutt. Professor David Nutt. Read one of those books which give you the logic, the logical information about what actu alcohol actually is and what it does to you. But at the same time, if you can read two books at once or straight after, you need to read the inspirational stuff. Mm. So you've got the logic, but you've also got the emotional kind of pull and the motivation so you can catch sight of how amazing life can be the other side. So read something like The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober or The Sober Diaries by Claire Pooley. There's a whole reading list on, on the Sober Club um, on the front facing part of the website. So you can go to thesoberclub.com and there's a, a whole reading list, a load of suggestions there. And then listen to a bunch of podcasts. Obviously I'd recommend my own because <laughs> I've had some amazing guests. Um, I've got fabulous people on there. So we've got 80 episodes uh, plus to listen yeah. to. So it's called Alcohol Free Life. And the guests there are so inspirational. It's totally non-judgmental. Um, and there's a whole raft of guests, authors and all kinds of people. And when you, I really believe that if you answer yes to this question and then you read a, a little bit of a book like the William Porter's book, so you start to grasp, okay, hold on. So alcohol is actually toxic and really bad for me. Uh, and then you catch sight of the inspiration. So hold on a minute. I'm going to feel, I'm not just going to lose a bit of weight and sleep better. I might be a totally different person. This might change everything in my life for the better. And you get that sense of optimism that gives you the motivation. And you listen to the podcast and again, for, for more motivation, that gives you the motivation to start your 30 days. And then you need to do your minimum of 30 days before you reassess. So obviously, if, if, if you join the Sober Club in the it, Get the Buzz Without the Booze, our online course, our first few lessons are encouraging you to ask questions of yourself 
because that's really what it comes down to rather than just thinking oh I'm feeling a bit rubbish I, I need to relax I need a treat reach for the wine mm. actually really get clarity on asking get in touch with your own emotions well how am I really feeling and is alcohol really the answer or is there something else going on so that would be the starting point it's the question it's the getting immersed in the logic and the inspiration and take action and accept that the first 30 days are hard accept that anything worth doing is hard right but you can make it a lot easier if you put a few of these things in place. I also do one-to-one -one coaching with people. And when I do that, I focus a lot on the nutrition because we haven't really touched on it. But obviously, when you stop drinking, your brain chemistry is all over the place. So that can be another really, really big aspect to focus on. Well, it's interesting you say that, actually, because um, I just remember, the, the, as you were saying, it, that um, a couple of years ago, I'd been to a wedding. And um, you know, obviously you drink at weddings, there's the champagne, there's a couple of beers, that kind of thing. I was remembering this, uh, this wedding and on the way back from the wedding, the next day, um, my blood sugar was all over the place. Yeah. I was craving food all day long. I felt confused, a bit dizzy, completely unlike the, the normal day-to-day -day way that, that I am. And that was, I think, two beers and a glass of champagne. Yeah, definitely. I mean, people that drink every day, um, you know, are often just in a spiral of, of, yeah. of you know, the alcohol, the crap food, um, and, and it, everything is just kept. So, I mean, our, our bodies are clever, you know, they kind of, they just about keep us going. But then when you pull the alcohol away, of course, your body's going, what the hell's happened here? I haven't got the, the dopamine hit that mm -hmm. I normally get. What's going on? What are you doing to me? You know, I'm going to make you feel really crap and miserable um, because it's it, literally the brain chemistry is totally mixed up and confused. Yeah. But food can heal. <laughs> it really can. You may need some supplements and stuff as well. I, you know, there's a whole bunch of things I recommend, but start with great food. People often do the really um, bonkers thing of, of ditching the booze and going on a diet at the same time and that's an absolute no-no yeah absolutely not the right time to be thinking about dieting or depriving yourself of, of, of food or or fasting or any of that for the first you know certainly 30 days probably 60 days you have to focus on eating really well because you've got to put back those uh, that brain chemistry through food Jamie, thank you. That's brilliant in terms of everything you've shared with everyone today about how to cope with uh, sober shamers. Thank you very much for, uh, for being with us. Jamie talked about that off switch, you know, when she mentioned the coffee that she would drunk and how once she'd had that coffee, that that was all she needed. She also talked about mindful um, drinking. One of the things that I was thinking was, you know, there's that level of guilt that maybe you, sometimes you might feel you're going to a party that drink is put on the bar for you when you get there and then you, you're you not going to have it because you've made that choice. But then you're nudged in that direction and do you give in? Just reminded me of a story of a, 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 an elderly guy. It was his something like 80th birthday and uh, he only ever ate ice cream on a full moon. That was the law he had lived his life by. And on his 80th birthday, um, because his family knew he loved ice cream, they put ice cream in front of him and he said no and they said well come on it's your 80th birthday you should be eating this and he said no it's not a full moon he'd made that distinction he'd made it as i'm saying in, in the video with janie he would made it a, a non-negotiable and i think with things like alcohol it's really important if you choose not to drink that maybe you make it a non-negotiable and you communicate that to other people really clearly so that you then don't have to make any excuses the other thing I think is, is really key to this is um, being around like-minded people. You know, there's, a, there's some studies that have been done that suggest that people who, let's say, are, are overweight, have friends who are overweight, have family members who are overweight, and the people around them are overweight. And I think it's the same with, with drinking. There's a kind of a culture, if you're in that culture where um, people are drinking, it becomes hard for you not to drink and to become like the people that you're associating with because it's one of those kind of rules of the, the game, if you like. So I really like that Janie's um, Sober Club has um, that opportunity to be around like-minded people.
Are you gonna take the challenge? If you are, then do let me know in the comments below and look out for my challenge roundup video where I report how I've got on with the challenges our experts have left us with. So get that video and all of our latest uh, health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please do share it with them too. Also, if you want to get proactive with your health and wellness, then Total Wellness Club are developing health quests for you over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and you'll get instant access to health quests that immediately personalise your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform as we go. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can get to Questly. And I'll see you next week.